Sports is breaking news from News 8. In our Sunrise Smart Start, Rochester Police investigating a homicide overnight on West Main Street. This happened just after 11 o'clock last night. Ericetta Cost is live this morning in the city with what we know about the investigation. Ericetta, good morning. Good morning. Well, police responded just after 11 p.m. to find a man in his 30s was suffering a gunshot wound in his upper body. Unfortunately, he was pronounced dead on scene. Again, this is West Main, the 300 block near West Broad Street and Canal Street. A Again, uh, a man in his 30s is dead here. No suspects are in custody for this incident, and Major Crimes Unit will be taking over the investigation. Police say overall it's been a very busy weekend, a very busy past few weeks between this and a few other tragic incidents. Obviously, right now our thoughts are, are with the family of, of uh, the victim here tonight, um, as well as the family of. Uh, the, the young child that was struck by a vehicle earlier this evening. Um, so, you know, yeah, it has a toll on us, but our, our thoughts are more with, with the families of these victims. So. Now, in 2022, there have been 23 homicides so far. About 11 of those are still open cases. So police are asking the public if you have any information to contact them. We'll, of course, keep you updated on any developments with this story as well. In Rochester, Eric Cost, News 8. Eric Hedda, thank you. And for more on the homicide, head to our website at rochesterfirst.com. Also breaking this morning, a woman hospitalized after a stabbing in Rochester. Police responding to the 1900 block of Clifford Avenue around 3 a.m. There they found a woman in her 30s stabbed in the upper body. She was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and is currently in stable condition. An investigation is now ongoing. Meanwhile, a 20-year-old man also stabbed last night in Rochester. Police arriving at the hospital for a walk-in stabbing victim around 10:30. Investigators believe this happened on North Street. The man was stabbed in the upper body. We're told his injuries are non-life-threatening. Meanwhile, just after 12:30 this morning, police responded, uh, arrested a 23-year-old man for possession of an illegal handgun. This was in Rochester. While making that arrest, they say a group of men gathered around them. Officers say a 21-year-old attempted to physically interfere with the arrest. The 23-year-old's been charged with two counts of criminal possession of a weapon. That 21-year-old who tried to interfere, we're told, was given an appearance ticket for menacing. Well, Rochester police are investigating a house that was struck by gunfire on Bernard Street overnight as well. Officers say a house with four people inside was struck multiple times. No injuries were reported. Police did stop a car in relation to the incident. Its involvement is currently being investigated. A four-year-old boy is dead after he was struck by a car on Columbia Avenue in Rochester. This just after 5 p.m. yesterday, where police responded to the Columbia Avenue and Florence Street area with reports of a child being struck by a car. Police have not yet said how this happened or what caused this accident. Right now, we uh, believe we have the driver of the vehicle, and we're still working on that part of the investigation. So some miscommunication. It did come in as a hit and run, but... Uh, through working through the investigation, we believe we have the driver and nothing appears to be uh, criminal in nature at this time. Police have not released the identity of the four-year-old boy or the driver who hit him. Again, no charges have been filed in police so far have ruled this a tragic accident. Also over the weekend, a 10-year-old girl now recovering in the hospital this morning after being shot four times through the wall of her grandmother's house. This happened overnight Saturday on Molson Street in Rochester. The mayor now calling for justice by asking the, asking the community to step up. We have individuals that can believe that believe and think that it is okay to shoot into structures even when innocent children who have nothing to do with those beefs are in those houses. And we have to say that we need to stop this. There is another way. At least 20 gunshots were fired into that home on Molson Street and no suspects are in custody. Meanwhile, the Genesee County Sheriff's Office is currently investigating a fire that happened on Co Avenue in Oakfield where two cats died. According to the Sheriff's Office, firefighters reported to the scene around 9.30 Saturday night. They say the fire came from the basement and a woman was inside when the fire started. Several other animals inside were rescued. The woman was taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Her condition is unknown at this time.
James, uh, working on the morning checklist, uh, different looking list than we've seen in recently here, my yeah. friend. Lots right. of new options to consider. Yes, I had to uh, add a couple of things. T-shirt, I added it in, subbed out the winter jacket. Nice. Uh, and we'll check that one off today because it is very mild. We're starting off already in the 60s. No need for the jacket. Unless you're thinking maybe the rain jacket could be a good idea if you're out for a long period of time. Lunchtime, we have a chance for a shower or thunderstorm, but the best chance for rain comes tonight. The actual cold front passes through after about 7 p.m., so downpours, a few thunderstorms, maybe some gusty wind uh, with that passage of the front uh, again late tonight. So let's soak it in there. It is 80 degrees likely today. I do not see it for the rest of the month. We'll have the bus stop forecast as kids head back to school today at the end of the show. Mark. All right, uh, James, uh, thank you. Checking the roads again. Just into our newsroom, an accident on the throughway this morning. It is the westbound lane between exits 42 and 43. Live view of the city, no issues to speak of. If you are heading out the door, 390, 490, or 5, and 590, all up to speed at this hour. All right, in other news, the White House says it's preparing to lift the Title 42 pandemic restrictions at the southern border by the end of next month. Republicans, Republicans are calling on the Biden administration to keep Title 42 in effect. Anna Warnicke reports from D.C. Texas Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar says lifting the pandemic asylum restrictions, known as Title 42, will cause an immediate surge of migrants that Border Patrol isn't prepared to handle. The messages that are going out to the smugglers and to, and to the migrants is that on May 23rd, you can go ahead and come in. Cuellar, who represents a South Texas border district, says his constituents are very concerned. Who's listening to the border communities is my question. The Department of Homeland Security estimates that when Title 42 expires, 18,000 additional migrants will cross the U.S.-Mexico border each day. 500,000 over the next five weeks. My state of Texas we just simply can't uh, absorb this. Texas Republican Congressman Michael McCall says a surge of migrants in the midst of a pandemic puts Border Patrol and the border communities at risk. This is the absolute worst I've ever seen it. But Massachusetts Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren said on CNN's State of the Union that she supports getting rid of Title 42 because she says it's not consistent with American values. The Biden administration is putting plans in place to deal with people who are asking for uh, amnesty and humanitarian relief at the border. The Biden administration says they're working on a plan to ramp up security at the southern border. That includes relocating agents and adding more processing centers staffed with medical officials. Today, President Biden will meet with members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus about his immigration plan. Also happening today, a group of Republican lawmakers are scheduled to take a trip down to the southern border where they'll meet with local leaders in Eagle Pass. For now, in Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Back to you. Anna, thank you. In March of 2020, the Trump administration used a variation of Title 42 to turn away anyone entering the country without prior approval due to the pandemic. Well, the U.S. is giving new military assistance to Ukraine and renewing a diplomatic push. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Pentagon Chief Lloyd Austin completed a secretive trip to Kyiv over the weekend. They announced another package of military financing worth $300 million. This says the Ukrainian military says Russia has continued to press attacks in the Donbass region, increasing fighting along that eastern front. Let's get to the water cooler this morning. Pretty big deal in Major League Baseball over the weekend. History made uh, Detroit Tiger Miguel Cabrera notching his 3,000th career hit. That is a, obviously a significant milestone, but Ooh. add to it this. He is now just the seventh player in the history of the game to have both 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. He uh, won back-to-back -back MVPs and a triple crown back in 2012, and he is a World Series champion as well. That is a one-way ticket to Cooperstown. Yes. Big deal right there. Good stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice to see. Love the celebration. Uh, lots of hugs there. Mm -hmm.
Lots of sunshine too, James. Oh man, yeah. Uh, it was a good day for uh, that and a good day to you know, get back into things, right? Heading back to school after a nice week off mm -hmm. uh, and it's certainly mild. Uh, we're in the 60s now. We'll finish off in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees. Yeah, there's going to be some rain showers around. Uh, two rounds. Uh, one of them first uh, late this morning and into the early afternoon, right around lunchtime. A uh, couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms. A few of them could be strong. And then the cold front happens tonight. Uh, that's going to knock temperatures down into the 40s and 50s, high around 61 for Tuesday. Then cold Wednesday. We bottom out for the middle of the week, but a slow improvement into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with a lot of sun to finish the week. Mm. All right, James. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.